Okay, the third, third talk of the session uh, will be about the SCP-02 um, pro protocol, and uh, the talk will be given by Loic. Yeah. Thank you very much for the introduction. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so, the outline of my uh, talk is the following. First, I will briefly describe the, the SCP-02 protocol, then I will present the padding oracle attack, and next, I will uh, explain uh, the, the experimental results that we have obtained, and finally, I will conclude. So SCP-02 is a security protocol, protocol promoted by Global Platform. And in fact, it's an element of a wider set of protocols, such as SCP-03 or SCP-80. And uh, each protocol has uh, different features. And SCP-02 is based on two symmetry key functions, DES and triple DES. And with these two functions, um, uh, a mutual authentication scheme, a key exchange scheme, and finally, a secure channel are provided. And the secure channel aims at guaranteeing data confidentiality and data integrity. The main purpose of SCP-02, as well as the other SCP protocols, is to provide a secure channel. In fact, SCP stands for Secure Channel Protocol. And the genuine classical scenario when SCP-02 is um, used is when uh, one wants to upload in the SIM card uh, an applet. So I'm pretty sure that every one of us has a SIM card plugged into his or her smartphone. And when one wants to use a new service with a, with a smartphone, for instance, a transportation service or a payment service through NFC, the first step is to uh, install an applet into um, the SIM card. So very likely, the, scenario, uh, the following scenario is followed. So there, are, there is a remote server that um, stores all the applets, and an SCP-02 channel is established between this remote server and the SIM card. It's a channel end-to-end -end between the SIM card and the remote server. There is an application on the smartphone that will relay the encrypted commands sent by the server to the SIM card, which commands carry pieces of the applets. And it may also be possible that uh, an additional security um, protocol be used between the remote server and the application on the smartphone. And in that case, uh, there, is, there are two security layers between the server and the application, for instance, SCP-02 over TLS, and there is only SCP-02 between the application on the smartphone and the SIM card. So since what I'm going to describe does not lie on the way the mutual authentication is done and how the key exchange is done, uh, I will skip this des the description and will assume that the remote server and the SIM card are mutually authenticated and they do share new channel keys and now the server is ready to send encrypted commands to the SIM card. So when the server wants to send encrypted commands to the SIM card, it does uh, two main operations. The first one is to compute a MAC tag. So a non-encrypted command is made of two fields, the header and the data field. And this data field contains the plain text, which may be a piece of the applet the server wants to upload in the, in the, in the SIM card. So this first operation outputs an 8-byte MAC tag. And the second operation is to, to actually encrypt the data. Since encryption is done in, uh, with a block cipher in CBC mode, it's triple that that is used, the plain text is uh, always followed by the padding data. And then the plain text plus the padding data are encrypted, and this outputs the cipher text. And finally, one gets uh, uh, an, encry an encrypted command, which appears uh, at the bottom of the slide. This uh, encrypted command is made of a non-encrypted header and uh, the data field, which contains the cipher text, followed by the 8-byte MAC tag. Upon reception of uh, an encrypted command, the card does exactly the reverse operations. First, the card extracts the cipher text, decrypts the cipher text, and gets a byte string that hopefully is made of first the plain text, followed by the padding data. Uh, since the padding data has a specific format, uh, the card must be able to discriminate between the plain text and the padding. And in SCP-02, the padding is made uh, uh, of at least one byte, which is equal to 80, followed by uh, one or possibly known null bytes. Uh, so once uh, the SIM card has uh, extracted, the, uh, has discriminated the plain text, the card can recompute the MAC tag, uh, and this computation is done over the genuine header and the plain text and some padding data. And then the card compares this new tag with the card the card has received on the, on the encrypted command, and if both tags are equal, the card assumes that integrity is preserved, and then uh, the plain text may be stored at some offset uh, in the card's memory. So um, encryption and decryption in SCP-02 is done using a CBC mode. So I'm pretty sure that everyone knows uh, how CBC mode works. When one wants to encrypt a plain text block B1, uh, this block is first masked with the previous encrypted block, C0, and then this result is actually encrypted, and this outputs a block C1. Conversely, 
when one wants to decrypt an encrypted block C1, uh, this block is sent as input to the decryption function, and the result is uh, unmasked with the previous uh, encrypted block, and this hopefully outputs the genuine plain text block B1. So, as we can see, the previous encrypted block C0 has a direct influence on the result of the decryption. That is, if an adversary uh, either drops an encrypted command and changes, uh, for instance, the last byte of the, the encrypted block C0, this modification will appear at the same position on the decrypted block. Um, if these two blocks, C0 and C1, are the two last blocks of an encrypted command, the SIM card expects, after decryption, to find uh, some plain text followed by at least one byte of padding data. And in that case, if there is only one byte of padding data, this byte must be equal to 80 per specification. But of course, since the attacker modifies C0 with some value it randomly choose, chooses, uh, some value G, uh, of course, this, uh, the result of the decryption uh, very likely will not, will not output uh, valid padding data. If the attacker likewise repeatedly uh, makes the same change with the same block C0 with different values Z, uh, once again, uh, this will not output a valid padding byte 80. But in one case only, in one case among 256, with a, a specific value G, this will output a valid padding uh, data. So, of course, the attacker does not, does not know what's going on inside the card. It does not have access, at least a direct access, to uh, the result of the decryption. But let us assume that the adversary is able to get this binary information, whether the padding is correct or not after decryption. Then, when the attacker knows that the padding is correct, it knows that B7 plus G is equal to 80. Hence, the attacker can deduce the secret byte B7. So, this means that Knowing the validity of the padding after decryption allows the attacker to deduce one uh, byte of secret data. And this technique is called padding oracle uh, attack and is due to Serge Vonnet, which has found it in 2002. So the question now is, how may the attacker know when the padding is correct and when the padding is incorrect after decryption? So there are basically two main cases. The first case is when, after decryption, the card is not able to find a valid padding data and the second case when the card finds a valid, padi pa valid padding data. So in the third case, it may happen that the decryption module or the smart card uh, send uh, a specific error code saying that something wrong went with the decryption. Because in the first case, after decryption, the card has not, cannot distinguish the plain text, hence uh, likely cannot uh, compute the MAC uh, tag. In the, other in the other case, the card decrypts the data, finds some valid padding data, and then can proceed to the MAC verification. But recall that this encrypted command has been modified in the first place by the attacker. Therefore, the MAC verification will be incorrect. So it may happen that the card in that case send a different error code saying that something wrong went with the MAC. So if the card behaves so, then this provides uh, the information the attacker needs to uh, perform the padding oracle attack. But there may be also another case, and uh, the, the other case, the other possibility uh, is the following. In the first case, when the card after decryption does not find a valid padding data, it may happen that the card be not, be, uh, be, not uh, be able to compute the MAC tag. On the other case, the card can decrypt, uh, find uh, uh, valid padding data, and then can proceed to the MAC verification. Therefore, the computation time in either case is different, and this can also be used by the attacker if it's able to get this information to mount the padding oracle uh, attack. So, back to our practical experiments. In our case, we have tested several smart cards, and what we have ob observed is that the card, upon reception of an encrypted command, always sends a response. This is per specification. This is the so-called two-byte status word. We have also observed that, be the padding uh, uh, correct or not after decryption, the card sends always the same error code uh, to the server, and this is per SCP-02 uh, specification. But we have also observed the following. So this, this graph depicts the response time of the card in either case. The red curve corresponds to, res to the response time when the padding data is invalid after decryption, and the blue curve corresponds to the response time when the padding is valid after decryption. So this leads to two observations. The first one is that uh, seemingly the card behaves differently in either case. Very likely, uh, when the padding is incorrect, the card uh, decrypts the data, but does not make the MAC computation. Whereas in the second case, the card decrypts, finds some valid padding data, and then uh, makes the MAC computation. And this leads to the second observation, which is that the computation time uh, spent by the card is in fact 
directly reflected in the response time. So this response time provides a suitable uh, uh, padding oracle in order for an attacker to mount the, uh, the attack. And these observations have been made uh, in several uh, cards that we have tested. The response, times, the response times may be different depending on the card, but in all cases, we have been able to clearly distinguish between the case when the padding is incorrect after decryption, which corresponds to the red curve, and when the case, uh, and the case when the, the padding is correct after decryption. So more practically, more precisely, what we have done is that we have used an experimental setting. We have simulated the server, and we have tested 10 models of smart cards provided by different manufacturers. We have tested two types of smart cards, of, uh, of SIM cards, either uh, two types of smart cards, sorry, either SIM cards or uh, generic Java cards. And the experiment that we have done is to randomly generate 16 bytes. And uh, these 16 bytes have been sent through encrypted uh, SCP02 command to the card. Um, and the purpose for our attacker was to retrieve these 16 bytes using this padding oracle attack and the timing side channel. We have made the same experiment several times with each card, and in all cases, we have been able to retrieve these 16 bytes, which could be uh, a symmetric key, for instance. Um, the complexity of the attack is almost optimal, and regarding the duration of the attack, this, it ranges from roughly 3 minutes up to 12 minutes. And in fact, this duration uh, depends almost only on the card, but not on the specifics of the attack, because, because some cards send the response to the server faster than other cards. So this shows that the padding oracle attack is applicable to SCP02 and to several models of cards that do implement the protocol. And the question now is how many smart cards can be impacted in real life? So I don't have the answer to that question, but at least one can propose a realistic scenario that an attacker can apply uh, in real life. So this scenario is in fact the standard, the classical scenario when one wants to upload an applet into its SIM card in order to be able later on to use some service such as a payment service or a transportation service through uh, NFC with uh, her or his smartphone. So um, the applet carries uh, a symmetry key that will be used by the legitimate, legitimate owner of the smartphone to authenticate and to grant access to the service. And the purpose of our attacker is to get to retrieve this key in order to impersonate the user. So the first step of this scenario is to infect the smartphone with a Trojan. So this seems um, difficult to achieve, but last year Google has detected in its store 700,000 applications that were potentially harmful. And this number refers also to um, applications that were embedding malware or Trojans. So this may be a suitable um, contamination vector. Once the Trojan is on the smartphone, it can get, through privilege escalation, uh, access to the memory space of the application, the legitimate application, that relays the, the encrypted command between the server and the SIM card. Uh, then, to the, at that point, the Trojan can uh, modify the encrypted commands and can detect when the, the SIM card sends the response to the server. That is, the Trojan can apply the padding oracle attack. Moreover, since the, the attacker needs to make several trials in order to get one byte, the Trojan can repeatedly trigger the installation and the installation of the applet uh, in order to compel the server to repeatedly send the same applet to the SIM card. So now, what can be the possible mitigations? So the first mitigation, obviously, is to correct the implementation. I think that it's not uh, an easy task to achieve, and moreover, it's not a mitigation that can be used for uh, cards that are, are already deployed. Another possibility is to uh, use additional security mechanisms, either uh, instead or in addition to SCP02. But once again, uh, this assumes that uh, such mechanisms be available on the smart cards that are already uh, um, deployed. Also, one can use a specific SCP02 command, which is called put key. And this command, when data is encrypted with this command, data is encrypted, in fact, in fact twice. A first time with an extra channel key, and the second, a second time with the procedure that I have described in this talk. So if, if an, an attacker uses this command to apply the attack, the attacker will uh, succeed in breaking the outer uh, encryption layer, but uh, eventually will get data that are encrypted with this extra channel key. So, regarding the padding oracle attack, this seems a uh, an efficient way to mitigate the attack. Nonetheless, uh, in SCP02, the, the encryption schemes are deterministic. So, in fact, even if one uses this uh, command, put key, uh, it's, it's possible to retrieve another type of secrets, maybe a password or a pin code, if the attacker uh, has access to an encryption oracle. 
Finally, uh, what, uh, another way to mitigate the attack is to forbid the server from sending too many times the same uh, secrets uh, to the SIM card. Since the attacker needs to make several trials to, get, uh, to retrieve one single uh, byte, this is an efficient way to thwart the attack. So, to summary, um, we have shown that the banning recall attack against CPU2 uh, is possible. This is uh, possible for two reason reasons. The first one is theoretical and lies on the way the protocol is uh, uh, designed, and more pre uh, precisely, in the uh, encrypted MAC scheme. And the second reason, uh, very likely, uh, is related to the way the protocol is uh, implemented in the smart cards. Of course, several requirements must be fulfilled for an attacker to be uh, successful, and in particular, such an attacker must be able to discriminate between the response times uh, sent by the card. In practice, we have uh, shown that in an experimental setting that different models of smart cards uh, can be uh, attacked with this, um, uh, with this attack. And the question is now how many cards can be impacted in, in, in real life. Uh, we have informed the card manufacturers that uh, have produced the card we have tested, and also Global Platform, which is in charge of the protocol. And uh, while this paper was <coughs> under submission, SCPO2 has been deprecated by Global Platform, and now what is recommended uh, is to use SCPO3 instead. And this concludes my talk. I thank you, and I'm willing to answer any question if you want. Thank you. Thank you, Olivier. Do you have a question? Yes? Did they get rid of the MAC then encrypt in SCP3? Yes, in SCP03, the, the scheme is completely different. It's a, a MAC, uh, it's an encrypt then MAC scheme. And moreover, it uses AES and not triple S. Another question? Maybe a one short question. The, the attack is existing uh, since 2002. How do you, ex how do you explain that uh, developers have not developed, uh, have not implemented countermeasures against this padding or recall attack? Uh, well, I don't have exactly an explanation, but I think that uh, the reason why this uh, attack has not been uh, found in uh, this uh, protocol, the CPU2, is because as far as I know, the protocol, the specification was presented publicly uh, maybe a few weeks or a few months before Serge Vonnet has presented his uh, seminal paper on the padding recall attack. Um, and uh, I think that this shows that, uh, in fact, uh, all uh, cryptographic schemes should be analyzed anew based on the new findings in cryptography and security. Another reason may be that, in fact, even though uh, SCP-02 uh, and S other SCP protocols are, according to me, widely used in numerous uh, security elements or smart cards, I think that, in fact, there are pretty confidential uh, schemes and they are not, they are not um, publicly uh, discussed nor analyzed. And this, is, this may also explain why uh, such attack is possible uh, nowadays. Okay. But, but, but this flaw of, of uh, SCP-02 was already known, no? no. The, the, the fact that uh, uh, padding Oracle was possible is... I, as far as I know, it was not known, or at least it was not publicly uh, known. Okay. Thank you. Other question? No? Please thank the speaker again.